I've been looking at an ideal gas process and trying to analyze it, uh, understand how the flow of energy works in this process and what sense that makes. So in this particular process I'm looking at, uh, we've got a cycle where we start at this high temperature point here. We go through step A at constant volume, step B at constant pressure, and step C somehow arranging to go straight back up in the diagram to our initial point again. That's the, that, and because it comes back to where it started, it's a cyclic process. And uh, I went through a previous video going through conceptually the positives and negatives of each step along the way here. Uh, doing that, I filled out the table uh, of the three different energy terms that show up in the first law of thermodynamics. And we figured that out by looking at the equipartition theorem and the ideal gas law and the definition of work for pressures and volumes. This work equals negative PDV, integral of PDV. So that we, we worked out those plus and minus signs. Now I want to actually work out the quantitative results. Know exactly what the, the values are for each one of these. I can't give you numbers because I haven't told you the volume is one liter and the pressure is one atmosphere or something. I, I haven't told you that. But I want to work out in terms of P1 and V1. I want to find the answers to all of these things and, and figure out if, quantitatively, or at least mathematically, what goes into these slots in that form. So let's think about it. We're going to go through the same process one step at a time. Obviously, zero is zero. The work on, in step A is zero because there's no area under the curve. That part is easy. What about the delta U? I figured out last time it needs to be negative. How do we get the actual number for that delta U? Well, we saw we figured out from the equipartition theorem for energy that for an ideal gas, the energy is equal to N times the number of degrees of freedom per molecule times one-half KT. Diatomic gas, number of degrees of freedom per molecule is five, so this is a five halves going on in here. Here's the trick we can use to figure this out. We can put the equipartition theorem together with the ideal gas law. Notice on the right-hand side that this is NKT times F over two. NKT is just from the ideal gas law, and so I can put those together and say, that U system is equal to F over 2 times pressure times volume. That is the combination of the ideal gas law and the equipartition theorem. And so in our case, our F is 5. So U system, uh, I can even go through each of these three points. I've got my low temperature point here, my medium temperature point here, and my high temperature point here. I can write down what that value is going to be for each one of those. So let me just do that, just to have it done. Um, just to write it down, let's see. Uh, well, I'll put it down here. So U low at my low temperature point is going to be 5 halves P1 V1. Pressure is P1, volume is V1. There, we've got it. Uh, next, U middle at this point here, or anywhere on that brown curve, that's going to be 5 halves times P1, because it's still at pressure P1, and V is 3V1 times 3V1. So in other words, that is 15 halves P1V1. 15 halves compared to 5 halves, it's 3 times the earlier energy. And finally, U high, at this high temperature point, anywhere on that curve really, these are isothermal curves based on the ideal, ideal gas law we talked about in the previous video. U high is going to be 5 halves times our pressure is 2P1, and our volume is still 3V1 there. And so the 2s cancel out, and I just get 15P1V1. And that is... Uh, six times as big as our lowest one. So, okay, I've got all that, we've got our U's, and so based on that, I can then figure out what number should go in this delta U system in step A. I'm going from the high to the middle, and so delta U for A, let me put this in a different color just so we can distinguish, delta U for step A is going to be U final minus initial, it's going to be U middle minus U high. 15 minus 15 halves is exactly negative 15 halves P1V1. So that is what we're going to put 
into this slot in the table. It's got the minus sign that we expected, but I can fill it in now as negative 15 halves P1, V1. That's what we do for that. And then for Q, the heat into the system, that's where I look back at my first law of thermodynamics, and I can say, okay, delta U equals W plus Q, so Q is delta U minus W, we saw that before, this minus zero is just that exact same value. So in this case, these two are the same number, minus 15 halves P1, V1. Okay, I'm calling it a number, it's an expression, but it's the same value in both cases. All right, so far so good. Let's look at step B and figure out what we have going on there. What is the work on the system during step B? Well, I've got to take this integral of negative P dV. So uh, if, we, if we do that integral, if I try to pull that together, what color do I want to use? Um, in this case, well, I mean, I can do the integral, but really it's just the area under the curve. It's the area of a rectangle. The work for step B is going to be negative the physically relevant area of that rectangle. That means the width of it, which is 3v1 minus v1, that's just 2v1, times its height, which is p1. Negative width times height. No, let's see. Um, I've done this backward, though, because I'm supposed to do, uh, if I'm doing the width, I should be doing final minus initial. It's going to the left. So, in fact, let me rephrase that just to be clear. Uh, anytime I'm doing the width of something, I start my initial point, go to my final point, and the width of it is final minus initial. My final point is the V1, and my initial point was the 3 V1. Have to be careful about that, because we know that an integral going in the negative, direction, in negative V direction will give me a negative result for the integral. So I want it to be the, left, the, the smaller minus the larger to give me that negative result. So, okay, putting this together, that's negative 2v1 with a negative there gives me positive 2 v1 times p1. I'll put it in our standard order, though, p1, v1. So, sure enough, that was a positive here. Let me, uh, let me put that into my table over here. Now that I know the correct result for it, it is positive 2 p1, v1. Got that? That's my work in step B. Okay? Next up, uh, delta U, my change in thermal energy in step B. I can do the same thing. I'm from the middle temperature to the low temperature. This minus this. 15 halves minus 5 halves is 10 halves, which is 2. So I guess, oh, but I'm going final minus initial. Fi this minus this. Final minus this. 5 halves minus 15 halves. This is why you write things down. Let me just write it down. I know that my delta U for step B is going to be U low minus U middle, final minus initial, and that gives me, this minus this gives me negative 10 halves, negative 5 P1 V1. So I will put that in now that I've actually written it down. Always do final minus initial. I screwed myself up twice already in this video doing that. So let's see. I'll put it in. Negative 5, P1, V1. And finally, we use the first law of thermodynamics, conservation of energy, to find the heat that we put in here. Remember, heat is just change in energy minus work. It has to be the difference. So this minus this gives me negative 7, P1, V1. There we go. That's, that's step B all taken care of. Great news. Okay, last step to worry about then is going to be step C. And once again, we will do the work. The work involved here is the area under this curve. There are multiple ways of doing this calculation. There really are. Um, I'll do it the most straightforward way by breaking it into pieces because that seems straightforward. Um, the, the work for step C is going to be the area of the rectangle underneath plus the area of the triangle inside, uh, the area of the ABC triangle there. 
And that's the area under the curve. And then work is the negative of the area under the curve. We know that. And, and in this case, we're going to the right, so I don't need to worry about minus signs inside. So let me just do that really quick. This is negative. Uh, the rectangle's area, we sort of did before, right? It's just uh, pressure times volume, and we're doing this way. So it is P1 times 3V1 minus V1. That is, uh, let's see, negative of this whole thing. Uh, negative of this whole thing. Uh, and the triangle area is 1 half times, it's the same base, and the height is actually, P, is also P1. Okay, so what is this? This is 2 uh, times P1, V1 plus 3. So this looks like it's negative 3, P1, V1. Double check that to see that. Yeah, it's the same thing I got before. Negative 3, P1, V1. You can double check that. The, another way you could have done it, if you know the area of a trapezoid, the trapezoid where you, I guess, do this and do the whole big trapezoid there. There's a formula for the area of the trapezoid that would give you the same thing. You could parameterize this curve and actually do an integral of a linear function. That's a, the most painful way to do it. If you can see the geometric shapes, just find their area. And we know that initial is here and final is there, so it's moving in the positive direction. It's all good. Negative 3, P1, V1, we can put it in our place where we want it. So we do that here. Negative 3, P1, V1. Excellent. For delta U, my change in thermal energy along step C, I'm going from the lowest temperature to the highest temperature, which means my delta U, I better write it down. I've screwed it up too many times. Delta U C is equal to final is U for the high temperature minus initial is U for the low temperature. And when I put that together, uh, U for the high minus U for the low, 15 minus 5 halves. Oh, what is that? Uh, that would be 30 minus 5 halves is uh, 30 halves minus 5 halves is 25 halves. So this is positive 25 halves P1 V1 is what I come up with there. So that's what I put in here, positive 25 halves. P1 V1. And now, once again, I need to find the heat that goes into the system. And remember, heat is just delta U minus W, change in energy minus work. 25 halves minus 3, which is 6 halves, takes me, or minus negative 3, rather. So plus 6 halves takes me to plus 31 halves P1 V1. 25 halves is what? Uh, uh, 12.5, and this will be 15.5, I guess. All right, all right. So I've almost got this done. Now all I need to do to figure this out is just add across. And sure enough, plus 2 minus 3 is negative 1 times P1 V1. I should double check. I know this has to be 0 because it's a cyclic process, but I should double check. Negative 15 halves minus 5 is 10 halves. Gives me a negative 25 halves plus 25 halves equals zero. Good. That is a double check that I like to do. And then across here, who? what do I have? Um, I'm going to do 31 halves minus 15 halves first, because that'll take me 31 minus 15 is going to be 16 halves, which is 8. And 8 minus 7 is 1. So I get plus 1. P1, V1. And as another double check, I should check that work plus heat for the whole cycle equals delta U for the whole cycle. And it does. So I've got a couple of double checks that I've done along the way too. There we go. It took a while, but we have done our complete calculation. We figured out how the energy flows work for this thermodynamic process with a gas going around at different pressures and volumes in the pattern that I've shown here. Obviously, it depends a lot on exactly the shape of these lines. You can imagine that if this C were a curve or something, or if any of these were different, I would have different numbers along the way. The path matters. The process, the exact process makes a difference. Uh, it's also worth pointing out, while we're at it, that the total work on the system, that negative P1V1, if you look at it, 
that total work is exactly the area of this triangle that the cycle made in the graph. This is exact. Well, the negative is there because it's you know uh, uh, because it because of the which one is higher the minus sign in here. But the the magnitude of it is exactly one half times base, which is three uh, v one minus v one times height, and the height is p one. It's exactly that with the minus sign out front that I'm that I keep forgetting right now. But uh, but that's exactly what you can do. That that total work is the area of the cycle itself, and that's a general rule that'll be true for any process you look at. All right. With that, that's uh, the end of what I wanted to say about this. We've completed this. I'll do one more little follow up to talk about efficiency for this and the meaning of efficiency. But that's a slightly later and more sophisticated concept, so we'll get to that in a little bit. Meanwhile, this is good for understanding the flow of energy in the system.